<laughs> Hell is what I'm trying to save you from, Resident. Your photos rallied our nation to rebel against Sasha. But now, they are being used to identify those who plot against our new Islamic government. As a history major, media that tackles historical events are always of interest to me. 1979 Black Friday is one such video game, and what's even more surprising is that this game isn't a first person shooter and doesn't use war as a backdrop for its narrative. Taking place during the early stages of the Iranian revolution, you're put into the shoes of a young photographer returning to Iran in the midst of major change, and only your choices will determine what side of history you're on. Developed by Black Ink Studios, 1979 Black Friday follows a young photojournalist named Reza. Returning from studying abroad in Germany, Reza is greeted with mass protests advocating for the abolition of the puppet monarchy in Iran. Upon reuniting with his close childhood friend, he is immediately swept into the rising tide around. 1979 Black Friday takes a page out of Telltale's book, and the focus of the game is on making critical decisions that impact future choices and ultimately the outcome of your playthrough. Fortunately, the game runs well with no noticeable hiccups or stuttering that are incredibly common with Telltale's titles. Additionally, you're granted much more freedom than Telltale games as you can explore your surroundings much more openly which will grant you insight into the time period through interactions with locals. These will then be available to view alongside real pictures that inspired the game's scenarios. They are accompanied by a small blurb that gives greater insight into Iranian culture as a whole and the status of the forces during the revolution. I really appreciate this aspect of the game and going through the collectibles was incredibly enjoyable and informative. Taking another page out of Telltale's book, 1979 Black Friday features quick time events. While infrequent, they still aren't any fun and it would be nice if games in this genre could move away from these in general. Additionally, some options available don't further the game, but will result in your death, so the fact that choices matter is a bit contrived, as there are only certain options that truly progress the story. This of course isn't ideal as it leads to a more narrow pipeline to get to the end of the game. As Reza, you'll have to navigate your way through family expectations, friends' wants and needs, and public sentiment in order to come to conclusions. Fortunately, all of the acting is well done and the game shows the revolution from quite a few standpoints and beliefs. The fundamentalist and secret police who supported the Ayatollah, pacifist religious who believed that a peaceful revolution was the way, the leftist non-religious who were abdicating for a state not dictated by religion, and the revolutionaries who chose violence as a means of change are all major players here. Despite the variety of emerging forces seeking their own justice, Reza feels that everyone was ultimately in a lose-lose situation, and the only thing that would prevail would be oppression, albeit a different flavor compared to the prior decades. 1979 Black Friday is split into 19 short chapters and only takes about an hour and a half to two hours to beat. While it's hard to accommodate so many factions and flesh out those stories in a game that takes less than two hours to beat, 1979 Black Friday does a commendable job of showing the different factions and loyalties at play during such a monumental moment in Iranian history. Undoubtedly, 1979 Black Friday's appeal lies in the story it tells. The game is short, and I don't think the ending is as tight as it could be, but despite the relatively weak ending, 1979 Black Friday does a pretty good job of depicting such a major event of the 20th century. Things have changed and you know it. For the first time, I'm realizing how different we really are. I'm not like them. Yeah, but it doesn't make us equal. 